Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel. And today we're gonna to be going over installing LED lights in the third gen Camaro. Uh, what I went with, why I went with them. I have a wide variety of experience with LED lights in vehicles. Um, probably done 10 to 20 cars with LED lights ranging from headlights to fog lights, tail lights, interior lights, all of them all around the vehicle. Um, and it really depends on your make and model, whether you're gonna need an LED flasher inline resistors, uh, whether or not you have a CAN bus system and you're going to need some anti-flasher lights depending on the company. Um, so you need to do research into the vehicle that you have and the light company that you're going to choose to replace all of your lights um, and make sure that they're going to work well together. But we're also going to be going over why it's a bad idea to choose the cheapest LEDs possible and I'm also not saying that you need to go out and buy the most expensive LED lights possible. So we're gonna be going over some of the brands that I would consider, the ones that I went with, the cons to choosing cheaper LEDs and why it's a bad idea, and uh, how to install them, the ones necessary for third gen Camaros, and I'll also have another separate video on installing LED flashers because that is what's necessary in third gen Camaros in order to have LED lights around the vehicle. So we're going to be going over a lot of different information and I really hope you guys enjoy and find it helpful. If there's any information that I forget to mention, please feel free to drop it down in the comments, but I'm going to try and cover as much as possible in the shortest amount of time, so stay tuned. So we're gonna be going over the LEDs I chose, how to make them work, the bulb numbers, installing them, and pros and cons to different brands and designs. So let's get into this, and I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys do, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, like I said before, and as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Let's get into this. Here are some of the LEDs or bulbs that I had in the car before. So I'm not just going to install my new LEDs and show you what they look like. I want to discuss the LEDs I had in it, the options available to you, uh, and why to stay away from cheaper bulbs, but also it's not necessary to buy the most expensive ones. So you could outfit your entire taillight system on the third gen Camaro for as low as like $10. Um, I don't suggest that, done it, didn't turn out the best. Um, but you could also spend well over $100 doing the same thing. Uh, but with the option I went with, it cost me about $60 for all of the bulbs necessary. And uh, that's not including the flashers. If you guys haven't checked out that video, go ahead and check that out. I show how to install LED flashers. Other than that, Originally, I only upgraded what I could. No LED flashers equals no LED blinkers. So I ran LED bulbs um, like th these and T10s or 194s in like the side markers and stuff like that. But as far as the blinkers, I ran the standard uh, 1156 and then 1157s up front just due to the fact that I didn't have an LED flasher. So I couldn't run LED blinkers. Uh, but I ran LEDs everywhere else. From old to new vehicles, you need to research the bulb and figure out whether they're plug and play or do you need an LED flasher, inline resistors due to the load, flashers or CAN bus systems, which if not done correctly, you may have flickering or you may have hyper flashing or you may have locked lights. Like when you turn on the blinker, it just stays solid. Uh, so you need to do the research on your vehicle, but if it's a third gen, simply replacing the two flashers under the dash with LED flashers, you can then run LEDs around the entire vehicle. Uh, so these are some cheaper ones that I bought about five or six years ago on eBay, I believe. I just bought like a bulk 10 pack of these, a bulk like 25 pack of 194 bulbs, which are the smaller ones. And they're all white. I just did everything in white. So when it comes to cheaper bulbs like this, you basically, you get a lack of engineering. A lot of companies will just try to mimic more expensive LED brands, which doesn't always turn out the best. So there's lack of engineering and many will, will copy other designs and just do it as cheap as possible to try and outsell those that have a good reputation just because they look similar or maybe they'll throw more LEDs on them to make them look more appealing. You know, they're gonna be brighter. And a lot of the times all they're doing is stacking as many LEDs on a cylinder as possible. And many of them without any heat dissipation, 
which causes the LEDs to run hot and that causes premature failure. You may also see a lot of shadow spots um, if there aren't a lot of LEDs, if they're just randomly placed, uh, you may get a lot of shadow spots. You also need to take into consideration the housing that the bulb is going to go into, whether it has reflectors in it, the direction it sits in the housing, and all that. That all determines on kind of the design that you should go with to get the most light in the right direction that you want. But as long as the heat is dissipated and the wiring and build is strong, most of the time it will put off a lot more light with less power and less heat. But the cheap lights most of the time put off more heat leading to premature failure or may dim considerably. When you first get them, you may turn them on and be like, wow, this is a, a great deal. Um, but after just a short amount of time, they do start to dim and you may not notice it at first, but the bulb will continue to kind of get dimmer and it won't be as bright as you once remember it. Also keep in mind many of the LED designs are larger than your standard bulbs so they're not quite this one these two designs aren't quite as wide as your incandescent bulb but they are quite a bit longer so when getting LED bulbs you need to once again take into consideration the housing that is going to go into and make sure that they will actually fit especially when it comes to the smaller T10 or 194 replacement bulbs. Um, a lot of them are longer than your standard incandescent 194s. Um, and a lot of those, the time, those housings are pretty small, side markers, interior lights, things like that. They're usually very small areas. And a lot of those larger T10 LEDs won't work with that. So those are just th some things that you need to keep in mind. Also keep in mind that LEDs are more directional lights than your incandescent bulb like when this heats up it's basically providing light all around it very easily well with leds each one is more directional that's why they do this a lot of the times with the cheaper ones uh, but when you get into the more expensive leds when engineering and thought has actually went into the bulb the direction of the leds are strategically placed to produce the most light um, without needing to do this. This bulb has no heat dissipation. There's just mini boards with as many LEDs stacked on it as possible. And a lot of the time many will choose white for the brightest light. But most times it's best to actually match the housing color. So with the third gen Camaros you have the white for the reverse, amber or yellow lens for the blinker and the red for the tail lights and brake lights. When you put white behind all of them, yes, they're going to be extremely bright. The lumens are going to be more than those colored LEDs. But when you put white behind red, you get a really bright, almost pink light. And then when you put a white behind an orange, you get more of a bright yellow light. So it's actually better to match. It might not be as bright. It's still going to be brighter than your incandescent bulb for sure. But you're going to get a deeper, richer look, more of the natural color. It's not going to be whited out as much so it's it's actually good to try and match your bulb color to the lens color so originally like i said i went with all white leds and i just had a, a lot of bright light but they weren't you know necessarily good coloring but with the new leds i did switch to color match the lens and many sites and stores for the third gen will tell you the blinker is an 1157 or a 2057, just like the tail or brake lights on my 85. Always check before actually purchasing. So it kept telling me it was an 1157 for the turn signal bulb. This was the turn signal bulb. This is the 1156. The posts here are both even. 1157 has one raised on the side, like so. Um, now that that may be correct for the front, but as far as the rear, 1156 for the turn signal is still the correct one, not 1157. So some other brands that you might want to go with also before getting into the LEDs, I decided to go with. I have had these for six years, ran them for about a year before starting the rebuild on the Camaro and my reverse lights just stopped working. I didn't know why and come to find out, um, they were just kind of glued together. So those didn't last and these got really hot. So that's why I moved away from those. And I've done a lot of cars recently, a couple of my own, 
and I've dealt with some really good brands, some that are more expensive, some that are still very affordable without going extremely cheap. This is Last Fit. I'm sure you may have heard of them if you're looking at any LEDs. Some other brands, Diode Dynamics makes some amazing LEDs. Last Fit, I've also had experience with Oxbeam. Those three brands I've had a decent amount of experience with and good experiences with them. A lot of them are available today. So let me just go ahead and get these out of the packages. So here this is going to be for all the tail, both tail lights in the back of the car. Um, everything except for the license plate light bulbs, which I already have white ones in there for. Uh, so I'll keep those, but I outfitted the entire rear of the vehicle for $60. Um, so these are going to be the white LEDs for the reverse lights, then the amber for the turn signals, and the red for the tail lights slash brake lights. These are the 1157s, 1156, 1156, and these are T10s or 194s. They all come with a one year warranty. And with these last fit in this design, they do have other designs, but I wanted to go with a design that was more of an imitation of an incandescent bulb. It kind of has that, uh, circular type of shape. It has a lot of good heat dissipation on here and aluminum housing uh, to dissipate heat. And they strategically placed five bulbs or five LEDs on each side, so a total of 10. And the bottom portion is actually crimped on to the housing, not just glued. So the build quality is much higher than the bulk LEDs that I had purchased before. 3030 SMD, uh, that's just the size of the LED and then the SMD is just surface mounted devices. So it has good heat dissipation and with strategically placing the LEDs, you have good directional uh, lighting in all directions necessary and it won't overheat. So this will produce just as good of light as many designs like this because these are just pushed on there as put on there as many as possible to produce as much light as possible, but there's no heat dissipation causing dimming of light eventually. So these are much better at cooling than um, let's say a similar one with 30 LEDs on it. So that's why I have had such a good experience with last fit, but let me just kind of show you a close up look. These are the low profile T10s or 194s, the chipboard. And these are good for CAN bus systems. So if you have a CAN bus, system in your newer vehicle um, these will prevent you know any hyper flashing or anything like that but these are more commonly found in interiors and side markers and you know smaller lights like that so not typically something that flashes but a nice little low profile and this is a red because this is going to be the corner light in the tail light housing next up with the red leds it is actually a silver led I'm not sure you can see it, but there is just a slight red dot right in the middle of the LED. Then you have the amber, which you can tell is a really hunter orange type of LED. The reverse lights are a yellow coating on top. But let's go ahead and get these installed and see how they look in the new tinted taillight housings. Don't mind all the sanding, prepping the body and everything, so don't worry about that. But the taillights came out really nicely. Go ahead and get the LEDs turned on so you can see what kind of light comes through. Now keep in mind, reverse light, license plate light is a T10-194. Reverse light, 1156. Blinker, 1156. White, amber, red. And this is going to be the tail light brake light, 1157. And then a corner marker light over here, which is another T10 or 194.
also have the side marker light here. Which fits in there nicely. But overall I'm extremely happy with it. I love how the red is a nice deep red. And the amber is more of an amber than a yellow or an orange than it is a yellow. And then the reverse light is nice and white where my old white LEDs were more of a bluish white. So I'm really enjoying these colors that are coming through the taillight housing. But if you don't know how to install the bulbs, it's very simple. Once you've removed the taillight housing, which is five of these on the back side, then you have access to all of these bulb housings which is extremely easy so not very hard that's why I didn't bother showing it um, pretty easy process so I really hope you guys enjoyed if you guys did please make sure to hit that thumbs up leave a comment down below of your guys thoughts on these LEDs as well as the way my taillights turned out and as always subscribe if you're not a subscriber see you guys next time